Hey, what's up you guys? I'm Sarah Labrat and today we are talking about my attack plan for draft five. If you've been watching my channel for a little while now, you know that I was in the middle of draft four in December-ish and was questioning whether or not I wanted to just get into draft five or if I wanted to finish draft four. And ultimately I have decided that I am stopping draft four at like 74,000 words, which is roughly halfway through it and just jumping straight into draft five. And so today I'm going to be talking a little bit about why I'm doing that, what my attack plan for draft five is, and how I'm going to start going about this. So first things first, why am I doing this? Why am I ending draft four halfway through? And why am I jumping straight into draft five? My last video was a recap of me taking Brandon Sanderson's lecture series on creative writing, particularly in writing science fiction and fantasy, which are the genres that I write in. And while I was watching this series, I was basically realizing that I was getting to the point in draft four where I was just changing things and not necessarily making them better, which is why I'm deciding to end draft four and get started in draft five, because the things that I learned when I was taking Brandon Sanderson's creative writing class were full of epiphanies for me for project DE, which is my high fantasy that I'm currently working on. And it just made way more sense to start on draft five rather than continuing with draft four and not really making big changes that the story needs and instead just continuing to line edit things that might get deleted in a later draft because of what I want to do with draft five now. And so basically I'm ending draft four and getting into draft five because I don't want to waste any more of my time in doing menial changes instead of things that will actually make the story better. That brings us to the second thing that I'm going to be discussing in this video, which is what changes exactly I'm going to be focusing on making. And this is a large category. Let's just get that right off the bat. I took 20 pages of notes when I took Brandon Sanderson's creative writing class. And then over the last couple of days, I've been rereading through those notes and taking notes on what of those things I think would apply to draft five. And it's mostly focusing on making things more consistent and more intriguing throughout the story. And so I'm going to list some of them off. It is going to be hard to keep all of these things in mind as I'm going through, but I'm going to do my best. I'm going to have these pages torn out and probably hung up on my wall while I'm working on this. And most of the areas that I'm going to be working on in my book in draft five are only going to need work in a couple of these areas. I'm not applying absolutely everything to every single scene because some do some things better than others. One really quick disclaimer is that I do think that roughly the first half of my book is pretty solid. And so that will take fewer of these things being applied in draft five to make them better. The first half mostly just needs a consistent check. And then the second half of draft five, I think is going to be what needs the most work. But in my second set of notes from this class, one of the first things that I wrote down is that Brandon Sanderson suggests writing consistently. And I wrote this down because I do want to work on my daily writing routine again. I want it to be part of my routine. One of my goals for 2022 was to write more days than I don't. And it is January 14th and I have not written yet this year because I've been focusing on finishing taking Brandon Sanderson's writing class. And I would just really enjoy getting back into the groove of writing and really just making it a priority for myself again. So that's the first thing I want to work on is resetting my daily routine and getting back into these things on the daily. The next thing was probably one of the biggest revelations I had while watching Brandon Sanderson's class. And that was promises, progress, and payoffs. And the reason that I wrote this one down is that I think I need to make sure that my promises are consistent with the payoffs at the end of the book and then I have progress steps in the middle of my book to get us from point A to point B which is aka the beginning to the end. And I don't think I have enough progress steps in my book which is why I think progress is going to be a big thing that I focus on in draft five. I also want to take some time to identify the kind of plot structure and plot archetypes that I use in DE just to lean into them or if I don't like them to then lean away from them a little bit. And I kind of have a gist of some of the archetypes that are involved. And so I'm not too worried about this, but I think it will help me in the layout of my story and help me if I get stuck. One of the things that I will need to work on in the first half of the book is establishing my character motivation as well as personality and conflict that is going to span over the entire book. A lot of these things that I am going to be working on, I think are actually a side effect and a 
negative side effect at that of the fact that when I started writing DE, my plan was to write a 400 to 500 page high fantasy novel and it was just supposed to be one book. But then I kept writing and I kept writing and I kept writing and I can't remember if it was 216,000 words or 260,000 words when I finally realized that it could not fit into one book and that it probably needed to be a trilogy. That's one of the biggest issues with the way that I started writing this book. One of the primary things that I now need to work on is rounding out book one to make it a much stronger book on its own instead of then relying on books two and three to finish out the rest of the arc. This is one of my biggest concerns about draft five is how I'm going to do this and not overwhelm myself. Another thing I want to work on in draft five is actually Sanderson's second law which is flaws and limitations are more interesting than powers and basically with this, I just want to take some time to define my character's flaws and limitations and handicaps just so that I can make sure that that is not being undersold because it's really not something that I focused on until this point. And I do think my characters have flaws and limitations, but I think I need to revisit these ideas and see how that actually affects the story more severely than it has been previously because I think that that is something that would make the story more interesting. Another thing that Sanderson talks about in this creative writing lecture series is the pyramid of abstraction and I do talk about this in the video where I basically recap the entire lecture series but basically the goal is to ground the reader in the concrete rather than the abstract and so I think that I need to probably add some more concrete details to my story and then I wrote down a couple ways that I could be doing this and that's through more show Showing, not telling. This is something that I've gotten a lot better at as a writer as I've been writing, but it does definitely still need work. And I think that that's also much easier to fix in revisions instead of the first draft. And something else that Sanderson said that I wrote down was this includes verbose language. Anytime you can go down to using fewer words, it's almost always in your favor to do so. So basically, I probably need to cut down on the words that I'm actually using, which is just fine because if I were to have finished draft four. Draft four probably would have gotten up to somewhere around 140,000 words and so I definitely need to start cutting some things out or at least paring things down because 140,000 words is typically too much for a traditionally published debut author. And then another comment he made was getting rid of sentences that aren't actually saying anything. So I need to pay closer attention to that either in draft five or in draft six. I'm not sure if that's totally going to apply to draft five yet. Yet. But if I see them, I'm gonna cut them out. And then in the two character lectures that he talked about, I did make a bunch of notes on that, starting with how to make your characters likable. And he just gave some interesting ways in order to do this or not do this that I basically just want to apply to what I've written and see how effectively what I have written accomplishes that or not. And then if it does not accomplish what I want it to accomplish, how can I make that better? The first of these likability things is establishing empathy. The second is establishing a rooting interest, which is basically showing what the character wants is interesting to the reader, showing their motivation, their flaws, their handicaps, their limitations, and their personal connection to the plot and why they are in the story and why the story is happening to them and not to someone else. And I think the personal connection to the plot is is one of my big issues with the story currently because overall Wendy E was not a series and it was just a four to five hundred page book or when that was the plan the reason that some of my characters were in the book made a lot more sense however now that I have book one book two and book three supposedly I need to make it much clearer in book one and I might need to add some things so that characters are supposed to be in book one instead of you know having all three books in one book something else that I probably want to work on is character wants versus character needs because they are different and often the story starts with character wants and then they figure out what they actually need and sometimes this affects the ending and sometimes it does not but I want to look at what my character wants are and what my character needs are because I've never heard it described in such a way that they are two completely different things and then another thing I want to work on is diction and metaphors to help distinguish my characters from one another Brandon Sanderson suggests relying less on dialogue text 
tags and descriptors and more on diction and metaphors to keep characters apart. One of the things that he said later on in the lecture series was something that new authors don't do enough is making a full and satisfying arc for one book and to make that first book as satisfying as you possibly can. Again, this brings up the issue that I was having, which was I started writing DE as one book and then eventually split it up into three. And so as I mentioned earlier, I really am trying to round out book one so that it can stand much better on its own and is much more satisfying on its own rather than feeling like it's the first part of three. And so those are a good chunk of the things that I am going to be focusing on in draft five of Project DE. Ha! <sighs> yeah, it is mildly overwhelming, but I think that as long as I break it down into smaller pieces, I think it's going to be easier. And like I mentioned earlier, I think roughly the first third to the first half is going to need less work than the second half of the book will. And so hopefully that first third to first half of the book will give me the momentum to finish the book. And I do think that I made some good changes in the first half of draft four. And now basically with the information that I learned from Brandon Sanderson's class, that's what's going to be bringing me into draft five and basically finishing out and fixing the last half of book one. So that brings me to my third thing that I wanted to talk about today. And that is what my attack plan for draft five is. Basically how I wanna go about draft five and what I think will make it the most successful draft that it can be. I think that the way that I'm gonna make draft five the most successful for me is by rereading the whole thing first. <sighs> oh, okay. <laughs> I've done this before. It's just a long process, especially when I want to like just make small changes, even if those small changes are not going to matter. And I could potentially cut out that sentence or something later on. I'm going to try not to make any of those smaller changes and really just focus on the developmental stuff and the things that I talked about that's <laughs> on this mini yellow legal pad and write down in a notebook or something as I'm rereading the things that I can actively change to make the story better. And then after after I finish that reread, the goal will be to go back through and actually make those changes. I am very excited about my goals for 2022 and finishing book one of DE is one of them. And so I think that starting the year off strong with draft five is going to do good things for the rest of the year. Let me know down in the comments below what phase of the writing process you are currently in. If you enjoyed this video, I would really appreciate it if you could give it a big thumbs up and make sure you subscribe if you want to follow along my journey of continuing to make DE a better book and eventually publishing it. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'm Sarah Lebrat and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.